So I'm going to cover today the our ESS um, portal and catalog application. Just kind of do an overview of various functions. Um, so I want to start with kind of how we personalize the experience of this portal. So it starts with if we go to our service portal settings page. There's a number of on-off switches and toggles we can we can adjust to configure the what displays and what doesn't display as far as feature functionality. Um, we also package a number of different themes to um, kind of start the experience. And so we can take one of these themes, copy it, inject uh, different styles and images to kind of create a customer specific look and feel. Our default theme is this Metro theme, though for most of our demo today, I'm going to kind of use this now theme uh, to cover feature functionality. So one of the things you'll see is our application is built, all these themes are built with responsive um, frameworks. So all of them have a uh, laptop, desktop, um, and mobile you know, view. Uh, we leverage things like an off canvas style menu with additional options for things like favorites and recent activity. You know, a customer is likely going to need help uh, when they're interacting with the, with the self-service experience. And so the way our, our, our help page is set up is it really is trying to push the user towards solving their own problems. So they're asked questions to drill into a specific topical area, like an email access, for example. And then from there, it'll start to reveal information, like here's some knowledge articles you might want to try related to email access. Here's someone you might want to chat with or schedule an appointment with to get that one-on-one -on -one consultative support. And then as they put in a description, it'll dig deeper into the repository. It can look at the social Q&A aspect of ServiceNow, it can look into the live feed, or it can look in the knowledge base for possible answers. And then the user can obviously look through those, those contents, provide some feedback, and choose whether or not that's helpful or not helpful. As a last resort, they can always go and submit a ticket to the service desk, which they're then dropped into the, that particular record where they can interact with the, um, with the fulfiller. So let's go back to get help for a second. Another route within this process. So notice we have one page here that's covering both IT as well as facilities and HR. So this can cover multiple different shared service areas and not just uh, not just IT or not just facilities, not just HR. And if I go into HR, for example, I have the same experience, but I have a different form now to submit an HR question. Um, different knowledge articles are, are shown for me related to HR policy, as well as a different expert that I can chat or schedule appointment with. If I go the schedule appointment route, it'll pull up a list of, uh, of available appointments based off of the schedule. And then from here, I can pick a date that I like, choose this, a calendar entry, and schedule my appointment. And then I'm dropped into my status page where I can track the activity or track this particular request. Searching tends to be a primary way users uh, look for information or knowledge. Uh, and one of the things that we do to better the search is we try to um, steer the user towards the specific search terms that they're looking for, as well as maybe redirect them to a different page. So an example, when I search for I want an iPad, we have some pre-processing going on in this search that's going to look at and pull out what are the specific terms. In this case, it's really just honing in on the term iPad. It's isolated my search into the tablets category. And it's, it's also reducing or limiting my results to just showing catalog items and not knowledge or business items. So that's some mapping that can be done based off of uh, pre-processing the search. Further, when I do a search for something like, what is the status of my request? Rather than throw the user into a search results of items that match the word status, I'm dropped into my search, my, my, my check status page where I can see the status of my various requests. Um, and act on those particular requests. Further, if I were to look for a status on a particular record, then I'm taken directly to that particular record in, that, in the detail page to track how that, that particular, in this case, incident is being worked. So requesting goods and services is obviously one of the primary use cases in the portal. The way this uh, is structured is it can present in a variety of different ways, but uh, it can start off with defining what are the, or looking at what are the catalogs that we want to show. I can drill into different catalogs, find my items that I want to request, which maybe are things like laptops or desktops. I can pop up an item, add that to cart, submit for later, 
Um, if the item had inputs and questions, I would see those here as well to add to cart. So I can also look for items that maybe aren't product related but are more service related, like maybe I want to request a new training environment. I'm going to pop this out into a separate page so I can get the full page. And I can see from here that this particular item is related to an overarching service called Technology Training Services. If I want to learn more about that, I can click on that, that link, which is going to take me to our what we call our service tombstone or service brochure page, where I can learn more about our technology training services offering. Um, I can see some of the frequently asked questions that are, uh, are notable about this particular service. I can see who owns it, who it's available to. Um, I can also request different things in context of this. So I can request some specific training offerings as well as that training environment item we were just looking at. So I'll go back to that one. In this case, I do want to actually request a new environment. So I'm going to request this new Drupal app training environment. I'll just call it test environment. I'll describe my needs. And I'm actually okay with the expiration date of the 17th, so I'll just leave that as is, and I'll submit my request. Now, unlike the other requests that I had, the incident and the scheduled appointment where I was dropped into a page to kind of interact with the fulfiller, this one has actually dropped me into the workflow page so I can track the progress of this workflow because this is one that uh, can happen in a re relatively immediate period of time to actually execute. So right now it is awaiting approval from this LMS support group and once it's approved it'll go through provisioning, verification, and remediation uh, if there's any issues. So I'm going to toggle over to uh, another user that's going to do the approval. So I'm over here is another user who is part of that LMS support group and I have that request outstanding here to reject or approve. So from the home page I'll just go ahead and approve this particular request which now we'll see that it's approved and now it's in a step where it's provisioning that environment. So I can sit here and basically wait on this page and watch it progress as it goes through the various steps of provisioning the environment out into our, uh, our computing services uh, solution. And then it'll come back and ask me to validate whether or not the environment matches my, my expectations. So I can see it's done. I have a link here to uh, kind of launch my environment, which I can jump out here kind of spin up my environment, test it out, make sure I can get into it uh, as I would expect. And if there were some issues, I can come out here and say, no, this is not working like I would expect. Which then will we'll, we'll route this as a task to the team that supports this service to remediate my particular access. So I'll come down here and this group got a task to validate or remediate my particular activity. As soon as they complete this particular task, it'll then route it back to me to revalidate again uh, that this is indeed working like I would expect. Maybe this time it is working like I expect. I'll say yes. All is done. Our now request has been completely moved to closed and everything's been set up. Further, as I come out here, I can now actually access some of my lab training environments from my portal, which I can see up, I've got one test environment that's been spun up for my behalf, currently in a stop status, and this is where I can also go and launch and access that particular item. So that completes what I wanted to show today in terms of um, both the user experience for searching, getting help, uh, browsing in the service catalog and, and checking your various services, as well as, as automating different workflow like provisioning an environment through the portal so the customer can get their services they want in a quick, meaningful, and helpful manner. Thank you.